everyone. I'm Adriana, joined here with my grandmother, Caitlin, again. Welcome back to Heart to Heart Astrology Podcast with a very special Halloween podcast today. My Lyran is trying to come out, my inner Lyran. <laughs> I'm Metra from Electra. Ooh, okay. <laughs> welcome, Metra. <laughs> we have a beautiful Mermaidian Pleiadian here. <laughs> With all the colors around me. Woo. Very beautiful. Yes. <laughs> We're having fun today in our podcast. So hope you'll join in and get into our Halloween spirit that we have. So if you are new here, I'm based in the UK. I've been an intuitive tarot reader for almost five years now, professionally speaking. And now I am a galactic astrologer and a past life reader. And I'm Caitlin and... Uh... I've been crazy forever, <laughs> as you can tell. But uh, yeah, I just uh, been I Reiki master and yoga, Kriya Yogini. I could go on and on. But in in essence, with the astrology, with the uh, since two thousand eighteen, and then um, galactic astro astrology for the last few years. So yeah, loving it. I just love it. And we love doing this together, loving the galactic astrology. It's really taking it's really taking it to a whole other level doing this. Mm -hmm. And we're loving it. We're enjoying it. So my yes. uh, YouTube channel, I should mention too, is Starry Sky Readings. If you want to check out my channel. And of course, please check out Caitlin's personal channel as well. Yes. Bhakti Galactic Healing. And then so we're on Galactic Astrology too, uh, Julia Bala's channel, Galactic Astrology. And uh, we're so thankful to be on there. It's wonderful with so many other great people on there too. Yes, yeah, such a great channel and just collective of people to be part of. Mm -hmm. So we're very honored to be there. If you have been watching us for the past few months, uh, and enjoy what you see, please do share with your friends, spread the love and share yeah. Uh, with Scribe. others that might Scribe. like these videos. So uh, yes, please comment down below too, how you guys are feeling with what we're going to be talking about today. And what are we going to be talking about? We are going to discuss the hunter's full moon, uh, connecting to fixed star Spica and Arcturus. And also I'm going to share a spooky kind of alignment going on on Halloween um, that I will share at the end of this video. Caitlin, you want to take it away? Let's get into this Hunter's okay. Full Moon. Who's Caitlin? This is Electra. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's get no. Metro Electra back in here from the Pleiades. Tell us what's happening. <laughs> All righty. So October 17th is our full moon coming up in Aries. And as Adri said, it's called the Hunter Moon. And it's going to come in at 1226 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and then 12.26, uh, uh, let's see, p.m., then for GMT. So I just wanted to start off, I found this word, which I'd never heard before. It sounds French. I'm not even sure of the uh, where it's from. Calling the time of the full moon, Plenilune. Isn't that a cool name? Plenilune. I just, I've never heard that before. Oh, that sounds nice, yeah. Yes, yeah. So the hunter's moons, meaning in astrology, um, shines its bright light on the connection with our ancestors and a deepening razor sharp look at ourselves within asking, who am I? So what are my own beliefs separate from the tribe? Am I able to accept change? Observing the falling leaves as the letting go of patterns that no longer serve me. Am I able to shift my perspective, opening to looking at the bigger picture? Aries is so comfortable in its springtime home of origination, initiation of courageous new growth and proactive movement. Aries is not so comfortable in Libra's autumnal home of initiating change through editing many times over the original plan as it slowly approach, approaches completion. So there may be a feeling of uneasiness hanging around, which may push you in Aries traditions to try and resolve situations or complete a goal way too quickly. So try to avoid living as though there is a deadline hanging over your head like a guillotine. 
Let the light of this hunter full moon help you slow down, gather and hunt out all the information so that you may focus on what is for the highest good of the entire situation. And so you don't want to leave anyone out. And that is including yourself. A lot of times we forget to include ourselves in these situations. So Adri had mentioned that we have two fixed stars um, in this uh, alignment and they are connecting to the sun in Libra and the moon in Aries, again, on October 17th. But what's really cool is they're going to continue to twinkle their light with the sun in Libra, almost also moving into the ascendant through the 25th. And again, when I'm looking at um, these alignments, I'm placing uh, the galactic uh, calculator at Cleveland, Ohio, when I share this information. So let's explore the fixed star Spica which is in the Holy Grail constellation of Virgo. So Spica is the 15th brightest star in the night sky and is also known as Alpha Virginis, 250 light years from Earth and is one of the 15 Bahanian stars of medieval astrology, which carries the magic of Hermes Trismegistus. According to Hermes, the gemstone emerald is connected to Spica, as is the plant of sage. So I'm just loving finding out about this medieval astrology. I know you would love to dive into this as well, Adriana. I know you mm. love things like this too. And we had told you uh, about the, um, uh, why my brain is the just- her The hermetic principles. Thank you, yeah. the hermetic principles, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is the same Hermes, which is ah, fascinating. Right, okay. I, I knew of this particular information regarding like herbs and uh, the plants and the gems, but I didn't realize it was the same Hermes connection. So this was fascinating to find this. So I'm going to explore a lot more about it. Could I ask you something? Uh, oh, sure. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Since it relates to, uh, corresponds to the plant of sage, is that kind of a call for us to have some sage during this time because I think of this time absolutely. especially with the veil thinning as a great yes. time to cleanse and sage the yes. home yes absolutely mm -hmm. also um using and then raw emeralds are not very expensive at all at the metaphysical stores so having the okay. gemstone emerald um I mean a fancy emerald is going to be a lot more costly but <laughs> the uh the raw is i love raw stones personally working with the healing energies so it would be worth checking that out to have during this time as well and and i'd like to just remind everybody that as we share about these fixed stars if you want to know more about how you're connected to them you can contact adriana or myself through our email so i'm ck pendolino at gmail.com and adriana you're at starry sky readings at gmail.com so you can easily contact us to do galactic astrology reports or readings for you emails are in the description below so uh, you can find them good. on our channel yeah, I just think we should remind people because we talk so much about things that maybe you know they can't relate to themselves mm -hmm. until they see their own chart so you can even go on our free galactic um, calculator, galacticastro.com. Is that right? I'm trying to remember. We'll have to put that in the, to get to that calculator. Yeah. So that they could at least mm -hmm. see if they have some of these star connections. And then we could, of course, really verify that for them and give them a lot more information, of course. Mm -hmm. Back to Spica. It's, it's known by the ancient astrologers to have similar energies of Mercury and Venus combined. Um, so we could say that energetically, Speakins may naturally carry a mental, emotional, masculine, feminine, and Yanyan balance. So that would be part of their natural traits. Um, the Speaker energies will be with us through this full moon and even towards the end of October. Again, call on for their help, for they love to protect those they love with all of their heart and soul. That's just part of their nature. Their intuitive abilities are off the charts, ESP type telepathy. And if you have speak and guides, you are blessed with their protection. The speaker energy beings are very good at deciphering energy patterns that are out of balance and can help bring the, the balance back in any person, place, thing, situation, event, and experience. So the speak and star seed traits um, if you are speaking starseed, and again, 
You could find that out through the alignments from the uh, galactic astro calculator. Um, you may be ultra hypersensitive to other people's energies and will benefit greatly by creating healthy boundaries. You need to learn to say no and mean it. Um, you may have a chameleon-like energy picking up way too easily on others' negative moods and vibes and even react to the slightest shift in the tone of voice of another and react to it. It's like your empathy is on steroids. Okay. And you may be very introverted too. So take care to avoid becoming mentally drained by too much focus on helping others and ignoring your own self care. Um, so during this full moon, be aware of any tendency to overreact to others' moods and be prepared by utilizing your energy protection techniques. Um, I hope everybody has that. I personally, uh, with myself and all of my clients, um, we use, utilize layers of colors, uh, not unlike what's behind me here, and put that in our energy field to create an astral color of healthy boundary. And each color has a meaning. I have been doing this, gosh, since probably like 1995, something like that, over a very, very long time. And it has proven to be so helpful, not just to myself, but to many, many others. So protection techniques are so helpful. I was just going to add that the traits that you shared about Spica, they very much resonate with me because Spica okay. is on my ascendant, which is cancer. Ah, uh, okay. So as far as protection goes too, I think, uh, like you mentioned with Sage, I think that could be very powerful at this time too. Oh, yeah, many gemstones, different, uh, all different ways to protect. There's no doubt about it. I think it's just bringing it into your awareness so that you're not this open target. <laughs> Every time you walk into a store somewhere, and then you walk out and you're totally drained. You've just picked up on, you know, empathically on lots of people's energies. So it's, there's something to be said about, you know, you wouldn't walk in somewhere totally naked, but if your energy field is totally naked, you kind of are. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. we've really learned this over the years that it's important to set healthy boundaries astrally as well as physically. Yes. Um, you can call on these beautiful beings of Spica to help restore your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well being, as well as uplift your soul energies, feeling more in tune with your highest self. So that, that's super important right now for every single one of us to reach our, our highest self is our ultimate goal. Uh, I don't really know what other goal there could be ultimately. Um, I mean, we could have lots of mini goals, but. Ultimately, I think we're here to work our way back home, so to speak, to our highest self, to the part of us that's true and real. There's actually another fixed star that has an extremely tight orb of um, 0 0.01, that's super close, conjuncting the sun in Libra, and in polarity with the moon in Aries at 0, 0.00. Can't get any closer than that. I guess it's kind of like a Kazemi. We could look at it that way. It's that oh, close okay. together. So this is the fixed star Arcturus, uh, which is around 7.1 billion years old and about 25 times the size of our sun. And it's in the Boots constellation. So Arcturus, again, is one of the 15 Bahanian stars of medieval astrology. And according to Hermes... Jasper is the gemstone of Arcturus, and plantain is the plant associated as well. So we've got some more that we can draw energy with. So jaspers, those are very available, affordable gemstones. Um, and then plantain, pretty much we can all go out in our yards and find plantain. It is a very uh, prevalent weed, uh, but very healthy. Arcturian beings are amazing powerhouses of yon energy, definitely masters of let's get the job done uh, with practical and very logical, sometimes appearing though as cold and detached in their energies. And I think it's kind of like Dr. Spock from Star Trek, you know, it's elemental, Jim, or whatever he always, he always would say, <laughs> something like that. He was so like very kind of cold and distance, but, but everybody loved him. He was a great, I think he had passed away. He's a great actor. 
great mm. actor. Leonard Nimoy was his name, just phenomenal. But science, mathematics, technology, engineering, and basically having the natural ability to understand how things work. These are all Arcturus traits. If I could just chime in here about Arcturus too, uh, those with this alignment from what I've seen in um, other people's natal charts will have a very yeah inquisitive mind and uh, intellect, particularly with healing, astrology, sacred geometry, mm -hmm. and any other metaphysical and spiritual teachings. So Dolores Cannon, somebody who has been yes. very influential to me and um, to you and many of us who have explored, you know, galactic astrology, star seeds, and past life type of things. Um, she is connected to the star system. And I believe Julia actually has a video on her galactic astrology channel where she looks into Dolores Cannon's chart. And it does show that it looks like she was, um, after she passed away, uh, reincarnating to Arcturus. So I thought that was um, a beautiful connection to see as she yeah. was a great teacher um, oh, in these yeah. topics. So I just wanted to share that as well. It was incredible. Absolutely incredible. Her daughter's kind of taken over. Um, I, yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. Arcturian starseed traits. Let's go a little bit into that, a little bit more in depth. You may need to learn the art of cooperation. So our ability to work with others. Um, you may desire very much to be the captain of your own ship, Nothing wrong with that, but you might land in a job where you have to work with others. So if we have to be the one in charge, we may constantly butt up against our boss or, you know, disturb our coworkers with that constantly needing to be in charge. Also, if you are a boss or in a position, you may struggle with delegating to others and trusting others to follow through on the projects you're involved with. So that can make it difficult in a working situation, unless you just are self-employed um, and, and just rely on yourself. That might not be a bad idea for some Arcturans to consider. But you also may be hyper-responsible, not so much, um, well, and a micromanager too, but not so much towards others, but towards yourself, like placing such unrealistic expectations um, to be the very, very best, uh, maybe even to the point of harming your health and well-being as you pursue these high-level goals. Um, and it could be challenging to your partnerships and relationships if you have that much Arcturan energy kind of running the show there. So an important lesson, I think, to learn here, and again, this Energy is going to be coloring and toning the time we're going through. When we share these collectively, we could feel some of this. Even if we don't have Arcturan uh, traits in our chart and stuff, you could still feel this energy in your lives or maybe in your partner or somebody around you. Um, but the lesson is very much to be with a little help from my friends, thinking of that that my partner, my family, coworkers, boss, et cetera, if I have that little bit of help from my friends, the ship will sail beautifully with all hands on deck, regardless of the captain, the face of the project, so to speak. So teamwork is more powerful than a dictator could ever be. And the lesson here may be to learn how each individual becomes stronger when there is a support of a group with the same purpose, especially for the highest good of all. This is, I feel, just beyond Arcturan. This is just a true statement, very powerful. So with the South Node in Libra during the eclipse energies, which we talked about in our last video, there's a wave of opportunity to learn the art of cooperation. So the fifth dimensional mystical beings of Arcturus have already learned this and are here during this time to help us access the gifts of cooperation. So true innovation, tele uh, telepathic, yet logical thinking and evolutionary creatives describe very well some of the gifts of the Arcturan culture, which is often thought of as an excellent prototype of Earth in the future, maybe where we are evolving towards, actually with several different uh, star connections. But um, each one of us work with these advanced beings of Spica and Arcturus during these eclipsing energies all the way again through October, and I believe beyond. So how do we do this? Number one, 
release tendencies of hypersensitivity and hyper-responsibility. I mean, this is good just in general. Um, also connecting to your highest self, as well as the Speakin and Arcturan guides to help you restore balance, cooperation, and galactic support to move forward um, into the new without so much fear. And then finally, through our own advance advancement as highly evolved angelic-oriented cultures, the ability to experience yin-yang balance through every experience in a unified perspective that embraces the value of diversity. A lot of people fear unity consciousness because they feel the ego, ego goes, well, what about me? You know, where's my individuation? That can be part of the wholeness. It's a divine dichotomy to have that so we could embrace the diversity within the whole picture. But it's that ability for us to accept others on those level and not expect them to be, uh, you know, carbon copies of us in our world. We all getting along together in this beautiful opportunity to evolve here on earth. So long time there. Yeah, Jump in. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> energies going on. Is it Spica or Spica? I'm, I, I'm pronouncing it Spica. I, okay. I, I think that's correct. I've heard other people use that. So Spica, yeah. So to go along more with uh, Spica, there is a connection to the Greek and Roman gods, Apollo and Artemis with Spica. So the star itself um, appears as, as one because they are so close together, um, but they are just uh, two, just like the twins, Apollo and Artemis. So uh, representing the polarity of masculine and feminine energies there. So I thought that was kind of a cool thing to add in. And it's really in perfect synchronicity here with the hunter's full moon, symbolizing the huntress Artemis or Diana uh, and her brother Apollo hunting before the longer nights to come. So I think that was just a nice little synchronicity kind of seeing mythology playing out in real time with that full moon. So now a bit of predictive astrology that I'm gonna share with these alignments that I like to kind of delve into. I've, I've been kind of diving into that more, I think with these podcasts. With these two stars, uh, Spica and Arcturus, aligning to the hunters, moon and Aries, I feel a message coming through of you reap what you sow. <laughs> so as this, signifies the time of the harvest, you know, before the darker, colder winter months, it brings a time for reflection, I think, into Mother Nature's next season. So on an individual level, what have you reaped from your garden this year? So maybe literally, but also figuratively speaking, what changes then can be made for an even better harvest for the new year? On Halloween, it's it goes back to All Hallows Eve or Samhain, it's called, and it actually is the turning of the wheel, and some see this actually as going into the new year. So um, what it's a great time if you don't want to, you know, think of a New Year's resolution in January, you can start thinking about it now if you want to get a head start. So I, I actually think it's a great time for that, and even in, into spring, but what can be better for next year? So Thinking collectively speaking, I do feel this symbolizes uh, a bit of a word of caution to everyone as a whole, especially with our wounds being triggered, because Chiron is right next to the full moon. Chiron is the wounded healer, right? So yeah. our wounds getting triggered here with this full moon. So I intuitively feel a shift in our collective consciousness, especially this whole month of October. I, I think I might make a separate video actually on this on my channel. So if you want to look out for that, I think I'm going to dive more into all of this and really get into the nitty gritty. As we are going into this shift here collectively, the choices we make on a personal level, um, you know, will really heighten the impact it has collectively. I mean, already generally speaking, the choices we make influence the collective, right? Um, when we talk about spirituality, but I feel like it's even more <laughs> um, at a head here at this time, which I will also mention the, this other alignment here soon. As Caitlin also mentioned, utilize your energy protection techniques. We we're kind of talking about that in the beginning, especially as the veil is thinning at this time to begin with. 
actions have consequences. So don't act too hastily. You were kind of saying that too. And was it this video or the last one or both of them actually? It's for this one too. Yeah. 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 Well, with that Aries energy. Yeah. So and don't. The anoretic degree. The anoretic degree causes, can cause us to jump forward. So yeah, don't act too hastily. Stay grounded and in balance of the Libra energy. Anything you wanted to add in with that before I talk about a different alignment? Well, I love what you've shared and the um, the fact that Chiron is so close in this as well. I'm so glad you caught that and brought that up because I think that makes a huge difference. So um, this, whenever Chiron's involved uh, and we start working towards healing those wounds, we have, I feel, more long-term effects that could really help us um, mm -hmm. because of of that deepness and the fact that Pluto is deep right now too, all the way through yes. November 19th. Mm -hmm. So we've got, got them both deep ones working with yeah. us again, an opportunity really to heal on such a level that if it could exponentially move out to the collective, it would be a, a miracle to me, an absolute miracle. If enough people will do the work, it, it takes a very strong centered focused soul to do healing work it really does and and you may be a lot of people out there may be going like you know yeah i do and my, but nobody else in my family does it i feel like so many families have at least one maybe two that will within their family unit and what you do is exponential so mm -hmm. if everybody has that person within their families there's going to be somebody sometimes very often they're considered the black sheep because they don't go along with the norm of everybody else maybe yeah, they I know practice, what that's like <laughs> <laughs> they practice a different spirituality or uh they may even uh, you know practice different ways of sexuality. I mean, like all different, there's all different ways of being. Or moves to a different country like I did. Yes, or moves <laughs> to a different country, exactly. So if everybody within that, in their own families does that, then that will kind of start moving the change outward. Um, yeah, it's and, a generational healing. Yeah. Yes, yes, oh, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and in time, I mean, in time, things will naturally be different because previous generations aren't going to be here anymore. They're not going to have that same vibration. It'd be awesome if we could do this quicker with all these energies that are available to do that. But even if we don't, change is coming no matter what. <laughs> we can't stop change. It's the only constant. It's the only thing that's real in that respect of, um, that, that we can count on is <laughs> that change is going to happen. Actually, I think now would be a great time too for me to pull um, an Oracle card. I have my beautiful new Oracle deck here that I got from Glastonbury. Actually, my time in Glastonbury, I picked up this beautiful Moonology um, oh, Oracle wow. deck. So I thought this would actually be a fitting time to draw this Perfect. card. And then I will talk about the Halloween alignment that I see. Also, what do we need to know? A message about this full moon. Okay. Oh, very beautiful. Wow, that's a Pisces energy coming in. A very healing energy. We have new moon in Pisces coming up. And then full moon in Pisces. So having endings and beginnings happening here, which we are in the transformational phase, right? Right now we are going through the transformation. So reflecting on where you um, started and where you are going to begin again. Wow. Meditate and contemplate is your message. Meditate and contemplate. Mm. Okay. Yes. So that's a great time to, yes, reflect back on things. Kind of talked mm. about that in our previous video as well. Yep. And this says balance, spirituality, and practicality. Mm. So we were saying staying grounded in that Libra energy. Finding mm -hmm. the balance. We talked about the moon in Pisces in our uh, our lunar portal video a couple of videos ago. Yeah. I think next spring we'll have um, the lunar nodes will be in Pisces and Virgo in the spring too. So there's 
it's just kind of bringing in that energy. We're still heading towards that. So this okay. Aries energy here right now is not quite maybe as strong as the Pisces is continuing. That's kind of what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that. The water element is hugely important right now. I'm really seeing mm -hmm. that in the healing work, actually. And there's, um, I'm going to talk about some water elements, actually, that are really uh, okay. influential in this alignment. So now I'm going to be sharing a really cool and kind of magical alignment. At least I think it looks kind of magical on Halloween on October 31st. Now I am looking at the UK chart, keeping in mind, but um, it should be about the same. It might be at different times, you know, depending on what country you're in. Uh, but what is so cool about this? Uh, it's called a castle alignment, and it looks like a pentagram. Mm. So how how cool is that on Halloween? And for those who don't know, I know sometimes the pentagram gets kind of a bad rep, you know, <laughs> but it's actually a pagan symbol that represents the five elements, which of course is earth, air, water, mm. fire, and spirit. Mm -hmm. which is like what we see here in astrology and what we're talking about all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really cool and very magical to be happening that day. Um, so what is a castle alignment? What does this mean? I had to look into this and it kind of comprises of two different um, alignments. So one is a grand trine and a grand trine is basically a triangle with three, equilateral triangle with three different points so this one in this case is a water grand trine mm -hmm. it has a mystic rectangle in there so so i'll have a chart probably on the screen here that i'll plug in we have the intuitive and psychic energies of the water elements as well as the mystical harmony driven qualities of the mystic rectangle the castle when you think of a castle right what do you think it represents? It represents a stronghold, structure, safety, uh, power, and actually even romance too, like in a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. What does this particular castle contain? Um, so it Mars in 28 degrees Cancer, which is conjunct fixed star Procyon at 2.23 degrees. I'll go into all these alignments here in a minute, but I'll list them out now. And then there's Mercury in 26 degrees Scorpio, conjunct Hadar, or also called Theta Centauri, um, mm -hmm. at 1.55 degrees orb here. And it is also, part of this is Neptune in Pisces. It's not making any conjunction uh, to any fixed star, but Neptune and Pisces, of course, being a very uh, powerful, intuitive energy, vivid dreams, heightened intuition. Uranus in 25 degrees Taurus is still conjunct algal. I had a video on algal that I did this year. So if you want to check that out. Um, mm -hmm. So that's been going on. And then, of course, like I mentioned in our previous video, Pluto in 29 degrees Capricorn. Um, these are all in the higher beacons also. So we're dealing with spirituality here. There is spiritual forces at play in conjunct Lyra constellation to the fixed star Aladfar mm -hmm. at, at 0 0.4 degree orb here, as well as Altair at 2.24. So powerful that castle. Is, <laughs> yes. That is a, lot a of divine castle. feminine, a lot of divine feminine energy in this castle. Woo. What yeah, what a plethora of planets and star alignments. Beautiful array of candy treats here. So what does this mean for us? <laughs> Procyon. So talking about Procyon, especially in Mars, gives off a very um, it does give a very aggressive and even violent nature. Um, however, Mars is in Cancer, so it might water down these heavier emotions. We can be a bit more sensitive, though, and would be wise to not act without thinking, which we've both been kind of talking about that theme this month. Do, do not act <laughs> without thinking. Don't act too hastily. So now with Mercury aligning to Hadar, this gives very heightened intuition, especially since it's in the sign of Scorpio. Mm -hmm. And Neptune in Pisces amplifies that, like I mentioned, as it's part of the grand uh, water trine with Mercury and Mars. Mm -hmm. 
So trust your gut. Don't get over flooded with emotions. More vivid, lucid dreams may be occurring at this time also. If you're experiencing that, comment down below if you guys are having that. I've been having really weird dreams like <laughs> ever since the lunar eclipse. So, And then of course, Uranus has been aligning with algal. It does bring, um, it does kind of entail danger still to head injuries, headaches, as well as psychic attacks. So as I talked about in my algal astrology video, um, do keep that in mind about, you know, that psychic protection. Um, I don't think it's as intense as it was in that month that it was occurring. I can't remember which month it was now. The Taurus, uh, the Taurus sign here, uh, don't let overindulgences get over your head too. So Pluto is now done with its retrograde at this time and finishing up its last time in Capricorn in our lifetimes. Uh, I discussed this more in the last video if you want to check that out, of course. Uh, it's been aligned for this period of time to a Ladfar, a star in Lyra, and Altair in the Aquila constellation. So both have the energies of seeking freedom, especially from being overpowered. So if you, we look into the channeled history of Lyra, right, um, with the history of their attacks and all these things, and Altair having that theme of freedom, because it's represented as Aquila, the eagle, freedom, um, rising above um, like a phoenix, too. Um, so I do believe Pluto has kind of dug up some of the shadow work on a soul level for us to heal through and readdress at this time, if it needs it. And for many of us, it, it might definitely be so. So tying up those loose ends in a spiritual sense, creating your sense of safety, creating your own psychic fortress with this mixture of outer and inner planets here with this castle, we are being tested in the strength in not only our own individual castle, but our collective castle. Things may get a little shaky energetically with emotions rising collectively, but remember to trust your gut instincts. Don't fall into the fear trap and practice spiritual protection, knowing that you are safe. So find your balance, as I said before, and a sense of security through the end of this month and going into November. So this you know, I think it truly is a magical alignment on Samhain or All Hallows' Eve, whatever you want to call it. Anything, um, uh, any input that you wanted to? I love <laughs> presented. It's, it's just awesome. It's great, great alignments happening. Um, I just, I just keep feeling that no matter what um, is coming up from masculine features, that the divine feminine is uh, coming together, working together at a very strong force. I, I just see it. And, and it's what it, and it's the type of force that magnetizes. It's not a forcing current to push out and try to come in and take. It is the ability to magnetize to you that which you desire. So I, I feel that is uh, coming in very strongly for this, uh, to, to the end of this year and beyond, really into next year as well. I think it's it's here, yeah. here, to stay, here to move forward. And the beauty of it is it's to work in balance, to not overpower, to not um, try to return to a matriarchal society, but a very balanced society. That's yeah. that's what I'm doing. Time will tell <laughs> yeah. what the collective chooses. <laughs> Take it one step at a time and make sure you're taking care of yourself at the end of the day. So, And have fun. Mm -hmm. And have fun, like we are. <laughs> have some fun. Let us know what you're dressing up as for Halloween. Comment down below if you're doing anything exciting. Be a star seed. <laughs> there you go. Good uh, Halloween costume ideas there. <laughs> well, thanks so much for watching this. And please stay tuned for the next video. We'll be diving into November's astrology. Please like this video. And we hope to see you soon. Namaste.